Okay, I got this big old chunk of soapstone. Uh, I got a video I posted about a year ago from uh, me and my buddy. We went and got it off uh, a vein in the side of a mountain here in British Columbia, Canada. We got it in Boston Bar. So what I'm going to do is carve one of those um, incense burners. I'm going to try carve a face here, a hole in the head and uh, mouth down here. So and then I'll drill a hole down here. If it works, I don't know if this is going to work. This soapstone could be pretty shaly, guys, like fall apart, kind of. But this seems like a solid piece. So these are the incense burners. Mark, one of the subs here, and he's a wicked wood carver. He's on my Facebook, too. Mark made uh, like a fairy house kind of thing with a waterfall. And these things are, what are they called? Um, I don't know. I bought them from eBay for like 10 bucks or 20 bucks, but they're... They got a hole in them so the smoke burns down, not up, right? Capsulized incense burners. Ah, I forget the name of them. Fuck. But anyways, I'm going to use these aluminum cutting burrs sets, guys. You can buy them for like 20, 22 bucks on eBay or Amazon. Should be free shipping, okay? And uh, yeah, they work really good for soapstone. And yep, that's what I'm going to use. I'm going to use my Dremel 4300. Okay, with that bit. So this isn't going to be a tutorial. I'm just going to show you. Uh, I'll point out key things in the carving. I don't know. I don't even know really what I'm going to do. I just thought of this. So whatever. It's better to have things planned out. But sometimes you just got to go with the flow. This shit is messy, messy, messy. I'll be using my shot vac tube. I won't be using my dust collector table. Because if you get this stuff into your dust collector bearings... It ruins them and makes it squeaky as hell. So I'll be using this, okay? My shop back thing. Hose. And uh, I will be wearing my mask. So less talking, more carving. Put his nose right here. This guy's beard's gonna come all down the sides this way. Okay, so his mustache. I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing here. Okay. Kind of deal. I really don't know. I'm just going to go with the flow on this piece, guys. Go with the flow. That's what we'll call this video. Go with the flow. Yo.
so good. So far, so good. This has little quartz, uh, quartz stones in it. So the smoother soapstone you can get, the better, like that's free of any quartz or little stones or whatever. You can also see cracks in this, but that's no big deal. So you guys, you know, when you're using these bits, these are, these are aggressive. You know what I mean? So when you're using a more aggressive bits on something like this or cottonwood bark, the better chance you have for something to ting to fly off. You know what I mean? If you use less aggressive bits, like hold on a second here. Uh, hold on. Like this is a, a, a quarter inch. This would be for my Fordham. This is a metalworking bit, but look how less aggressive. It's way bigger than these ones. But look how less aggressive this is because there's more cutters. The more cutters, less aggressive, right? So if you use something like this, I don't have my Fordham here. But, uh, the mad scientist is fixing it for me. It's making some weird sounds, so I might have to buy a new one. I'm missing my Fordham today on this so I can, so I can clean up uh, all this stuff easier, right? But anyways, so that's my thing about the bits. These are aggressive. The aluminum cutters are the most aggressive for this style of bits than the metal working are less aggressive. You know what I mean? And smoother cutting too. So <clears throat> let's see here. Now I got a curve in his mouth. Let's see, where's that stupid smelly thing? That's gonna sit up here, I believe. I'll have to drill a hole down to its mouth, which is gonna be real fun. And then drill that way too. So the smoke comes out here. Okay, so now I'm gonna carve in his mouth, I guess. You know, carve in his mouth and gotta figure out which way I want the smoke to travel down here. Who knows, it's just, uh, whatever, I'm just having a good time. That's what it's about, people, is having a good time. Oh, another, another thing that's really important too. I know when you're carving, you're in the zone, you're in the moment and stuff like that, but you gotta remember to let your tools rest. Let them cool down. Because I've fried lots of Dremels and lots of different kind of tools like that by just carving too aggressive, heating the tool up, frying it. So especially carving harder soapstone, let it rest guys. Sit back, enjoy your piece, think of what your next move is going to be, right? Okay, okay. I forgot something. Spit test. Let's see what this color of this stone is. Spit test. Oh, it's dark. Yeah, I love the darker soapstone. I didn't know what color it was because it was so dirty. Dark soapstone, spit test. So it's most carved in. So I want the smoke to come down here like whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. I don't know, my first one guys, maybe my last one. Well, the wave one, that the acrylic wave one, I'm making that into one of these things too. But those things stink. They don't smell like real instant burners, <laughs> burn cone things. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is go get my drill, drill a hole in here. And then I gotta drill a hole from here to here. Hopefully I can do it without screwing it up. Don't screw it up, Jordy. Don't screw it up. Any more ketchup blank by his toe. This is the one. I miss. OK, 
Okay guys, I got this stinky thing lit and uh, let's see if it works. I haven't tried it yet. This is my very first time to see if I want to go forward with sanding, which you know how much I love. Come on, smoke. Smoke is traveling down the second chute. And down to the third. There it goes. Look at the dark spot on the third. It is working. It's working, people. It's working. Oh, I gotta breathe more. Okay, so continue carving and sanding. I might carve this a little bit deeper in here, up higher so the smoke can travel better. And uh, whatever. It is what it is. It works. God, these things stink. Okay, I see it's coming off the top here, right here. So I gotta carve this lower. It's not really coming down here enough, so I gotta carve this on more of an angle. Right down here. So it comes down here, then down here. Okay, continue carving. Okay, let's talk about power carving. Wow, I'm sweating in here. It's end of summer. It's still warm in this room up here. So I got it carved and sounded this thing as much as I want to. I'm going to take it uh, downstairs, blow it off with the air compressor. And uh, this piece is nothing special to me. Well, it's kind of neat. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to blow it off and then I'm going to spray it with some uh, some of that Rust-O-Matic stuff that the, the home handyman uses. So I'm not gonna use beeswax on this because if you use beeswax, when this gets hot, the smoke might be warm out here. It's just gonna melt the wax. You know what I mean? So it's gonna be dull here where the smoke comes out. So I think uh, just like uh, epoxy spray is kind of good enough. So, or lacquer spray, whatever. I don't know. Let me just go clean it up and spray it. Get the hell out of this room. Sign your pieces, people. Sign it. Another thing, too, is I'm going to put this on my belt sander and sand the, the flat, the bottom flat, so it sits nice and flat. Okay. Okay. There you go. Don't know how much uh, coats this will take. Zoom in. Stuff sure comes out of the can uh, fast. Okay guys, if you're gonna use this stuff, I'd be really quick with it because this stuff dries like almost instantly and it goes on really thick. Like, look, this thing's already almost dry and it's been five minutes. Yeah, 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 yeah.